So what's going on guys, Kids here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 3 new PvP builds in New World Season 3. So after all the new balance changes, there is a new meta. And that's why for each and every single build I will explain what attributes, weapon masteries and even weapon and gear perks you want to have. Then what gems and specific gear you want to use to get out your stats as much damage as possible. Then as well I will show you the best gameplay of me using different weapons, so you would know which abilities you wanna use first on your enemies and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first build which is the one and only great sword and hatchet. And these are the attributes you want to have. So no matter from which level you start using this build, you first of all want to get your dexterity and strength both to 100 and then get 50 points in constitution. And then continue putting everything else in dexterity and strength. And then around level 60 and 625 item score gear, you should have around 150 strength, 150 dexterity and 150 constitution. And lastly for your gear you want to go with the heavy category. And this of course means using every single heavy equipment. So then taking a closer look at the first weapon which is the great sword. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first things first you want to select this one perk. And then unlock the first ability called the relentless rush. And then get these two next perks. Then from here let's move over to the other side and unlock both these two abilities called the Calamity Counter and Roaring Rupture. And then lastly get these 5 perks and that's it. Now from this point and onwards you're free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next. So then moving over to the second weapon which is the Hatchet. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock the Berserk ability with these two perks. Then afterwards let's move over to the other side and unlock the second ability called the Rendering Throw. And then get these two perks. And then lastly unlock the last third ability called the Infected Throw. And then get these three perks and that's it. Now again from this point you're free to choose in whichever order you want to spend your points. Okay so now let's move over to the gameplay where I will show you the best way to play this build. And for the first weapon we have the great sword and your first Q ability is called the relentless rush which will dash through your enemies while spinning and applying at 20% slow for the next 4 seconds. Then for the second ability we have the roaring rupture which when you use it it will stab the ground and create a shockwave that will do a bunch of AOE damage and you will get a fortify effect for the next 5 seconds. And in PvE if you want to be a tank then after using the skill you will aggro all the mobs on you. And then lastly we have the third skill called the Calamity Counter which will give you a block for 2 seconds. And depending on how many times the enemy continues to attack you the more counter damage you will be able to do after the 2 second block expires. And then for the second weapon we have the Hatchet and your first Q ability is called the Berserk which after activating you will enter the Berserk mode which will give you speed, self healing and attack damage increase. So this skill is amazing just to use in open world to catch players or run away from them and it's amazing as well just to activate and then spam the basic attacks for super high damage. Then for the second ability we have the rendering throw which will throw a hatchet that does damage and reduces the enemy's damage absorption for 10%. And then lastly we have the infected throw which will make your character leap in the air and throw another hatchet that will deal damage and inflict the enemy with disease which will make your target weaker for 10% for the next 10 seconds. Ok so then let's move over to the rotation and no matter if you are farming mobs in PvE or doing PvP the same principle and rules apply. So at the beginning of the fight we want to start with the greatsword and first we'll use the relentless rush then dodge once then use one heavy attack then activate the roaring rupture then now again dodge once and then now we want to use about 3 more heavy attacks and then lastly we use the calamity counter before the defiant stance ends from the roaring rupture and that's it. The idea behind greatsword is for every 3 attacks we want to dodge once and then we want to activate these skills in this exact order because this will activate the step and strike perk which will give us empower and stamina. And then when all of the effects have run out on the greatsword then now we want to switch to the hatchet and activate the berserk mode. Then use 3 light attacks then use the infected throw then use 3 more light attacks then use the rendering throw and then we finish it off with the 3 more light attacks. 
And now from this point, we repeat the same rotation all over again. And specifically for PvP, the skill rotation might be different depending on what the enemy does, but similar principles apply. So at the start you want to attack with the Greatsword heavy attacks, Relentless Rush and Roaring Rupture. Then switch to the Berserk to activate the Berserk mode, and then keep spamming normal light attacks with the rest of your skills. And then lastly, if you ever get in trouble or need more defensives, then switch back to the Greatsword and use the Calamatic Counter, and that's it. So now for my last and final conclusions for this build. This greatsword and hatchet weapon combination right now is one of the best builds in New World. This build will give you high tankiness while at the same time give you a massive amount of damage. So then last but not the least for the greatsword and hatchet you want to use the opal gem. And then for all of your gear use 3 malachites and 2 onyx gems. And then lastly on your character you want to equip the heart rune of the detonate. And then on top of all this, to find out the best weapon and gear perks, watch this video, which is titled Which weapon and gear perks are the best for your build. You can find the link in this video's description or just scroll through my channel. And in that video I will specifically explain how perks work and which ones are the best for your gear and weapons and much more. So in a quick summary, if you are looking to do high damage or you just want to use one of the best greatsword builds, then for sure try this one out and have fun. So then moving over to the second build which is the bow and spear and these are the attributes you want to have. So no matter from which level you start using this build you first of all want to get your dexterity to 200 and then get 50 points in constitution and then continue putting everything else in dexterity and then around level 60 and 625 item score gear you should have around 300 dexterity and 200 constitution. And as I explained in the first build, the yellow bar color indicates the attributes that you get from reaching level 60, then the blue color indicates the attributes that you get from your gear, and then the purple color indicates the attributes that you get from food. And then lastly for your gear you want to go with the light category, which means using more medium chest piece and then the rest light equipment. So then taking a closer look at the first weapon, which is the bow. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first things first, you want to unlock all these three abilities called the penetrating shot, explosive arrow and rapid shot and then get these 5 perks. Then now let's go over to the other side and get all of these 5 perks and that's it. Now from this point and onwards you can unlock all the other perks in whatever order you want. So then moving over to the second weapon which is the spear and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock the scuba ability and then get these 2 perks. Then now get the second ability called the perforate and then get these 2 more perks. Then from here let's move over to the other side and get this one perk and then unlock the last and final ability called the sweep and then get these 2 more perks and that's it. Now again from this point you're feel free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I will show you the best way to play this build. And for the first weapon we have the bow and the first Q spell is called the penetrating shot which will shoot a special arrow that does a lot of damage and can go through multiple targets. Then the second ability is called the explosive shot which will fire an arrow that explodes in 2.5 meter range. And then lastly we have the rapid shot which will shoot 3 arrows in a second or two and each hit will do even more damage. And then for the second weapon we have the spear and your first Q ability is called the skewer which will make your character rush forwards and deal damage while at the same time making your enemy bleed for 10 seconds. Then the second skill is called the perforate which will execute 3 quick piercing attacks each one dealing damage and applying a bend to the enemy armor. And then lastly we have the sweep ability which will sweep your enemy legs making them knock down and deal a bunch of damage. So then let's move over to the rotation and no matter if you are farming mobs in PvE or doing PvP the same principle and rules apply. So at the beginning of the fight we want to start with the bow and from distance shoot one normal shot, then penetrating shot, then again one normal shot and then explosive arrow and then lastly once again shoot one normal shot and then use the rapid shot and then keep on using the bow till the enemy gets close to you and then when he does then switch the spear and use one normal attack then skewer, then sweep and then finish it off with the perforate and that's it. So now for my last and final conclusions for this build. This bow and spear weapon combination is very high damage build that will give you the perfect playstyle for close and distance fighting. So then last but not the least, this is what you want to be using bow, spear and chest armor wise and perks are as important as gems of course. And then these are the best gloves, boots, leg armor and helmet. And then lastly these are the top 3 best jewelry that you want to get. If I went too fast, you're feel free to pause the video and copy these exact same gems and perks. But of course, this build will work fine with any gear as long as you're using the same attribute and weapon setup that I showed. And then lastly, this is how your item should look like. 
So on your bar you want to use the health and regen potions, then mana potions and then the fried alabanya. And then of course on your character you want to equip the heart rune of detonate. So in a quick summary, if you're looking for an amazing ranged build that will give you a fun playstyle and diversity, then this is the build for you, so enjoy! So then moving over to the third build, which is the life staff and hatchet, and these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, if you start from level 0, you want to get your focus to 150, and then start building your constitution. And around level 60, you should have 300 focus and 150 constitution. And then, last but not the least, for your gear, you want to go with the medium category. And the best gear setup is to have heavy helmet, heavy chest armor, medium gloves, light pants, and medium boots. So then moving over to the first weapon which is the hatchet and these are the weapon masteries you want to have so first of all you want to unlock the berserk ability with these two perks then afterwards unlock the second ability called the feral rush and then get these two perks then lastly unlock the last third ability with these two perks and that's it now again from this point and onwards you're free to choose in whichever order you want to spend your points so then let's go over to the second weapon which is the live staff and these are the weapon masteries you want to have so first of all you want to unlock this one perk and then the first ability called the sacred ground and then afterwards unlock all these three perks. Then now let's go over to the other side and unlock this one perk and then the second ability called the beacon and then get these two perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the lights embrace and then get these two perks as well. And now from this point you are free to spend your points in whatever order you want. Okay so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build. And as we already looked into the hatchet weapon we will skip it and go straight for the second weapon which is the live staff. And your Q ability is called the sacred ground which you have to point and select the area you want to place it in and then cast it for a split second. Then the R ability is called the lights embrace and it basically works the same way just for a single target. And of course you can heal yourself by holding the control button and then activating the spell. And lastly we have the F ability called the beacon which you can just aim and it places another huge healing circle on the ground so the way you want to attack an enemy is first of all from a distance use your life staff and auto attack the target then when you get closer to the enemy or he will get closer to you then switch to the hatchet and activate your berserk mode and then keep on using auto attacks plus the R and F abilities and then whenever you get low health switch back to the life staff and place the beacon on the ground and then to heal yourself use the lights embrace ability and don't forget to heal yourself you just have to hold the control button and then activate the spell and it's that simple. I usually prefer to use the beacon ability first and then right after spam the lights embrace spell and when I really need more health I use the sacred ground. So for more damage and attacking you use auto attacks and hatchet and to heal yourself switch back to the life staff and that's it. So then for my last and final conclusions for this build. This hatchet and life staff weapon come combination is meant to do a bunch of damage while at the same time having the ability to survive for very long and right now it is the best build for pve and especially for leveling and then last but not the least for the life staff you want to use the diamond gem then for your hatchet use the amber gem and lastly for all of your gear amulets rings and everything else use the enix gems and if you're a new player or beginner and not familiar with how this game works then basically the hatchet and life staff are two different weapons one weapon is very good with strength attribute and the other one with focus but as we mainly have a focus build by using the amber gem we make the weapon switch from one attribute to another one so now instead of the hatchet scaling with strength it scales with focus and by doing this we make this build do even more damage and just in general stronger and then on top of all this like i explained in the previous builds to find out the best weapon and gear perks watch this video which is titled which weapon and gear perks are the best for your build you can find the link in this video's description or scroll through my channel and in that video i will specifically explain how perks work and which ones are the best for your specific gear slash weapons and much more so in a quick summary if you're looking for the best and easiest pve solo player build which is easy to learn and play then this is the build for you so don't forget to have fun